السلام عليكم ورحمة الله We follow our lectures about the introduction to syntax In the previous lectures we have basically studied syntactic categories We have seen the definition and the inventory of lexical categories functional categories and inflectional categories and we have seen the difference between each type of category and what are the elements or the units that uh, are within or are subscribed within each type of these categories today we move to another chapter which is about syntactic structure syntactic structure we're going to see two types of structures phrase structure and argument structure in phrase structure, we're going to see first the uh, uh, definition of constituent. What's a syntactic constituent? And then we will move to see what are the tests that practically help determine a syntactic constituent. And then we'll move to see the argument structure, which is basically about verbal constituents. So we start. Uh, what is phrase structure? This is the first question we are going to address. Phrase structure is about the way a sentence is broken down into its immediate internal components. And these immediate components are phrases. It is also about the way these phrases are decomposed into their ultimate constituents and the ultimate constituents of phrases are words so the structure from top down uh, starts by the sentence and then the sentence is decomposed into phrases and the phrases into words if you go from bottom to top then we say a structure consists of words which are combined together to form phrases, which are also combined together to form sentences. So phrase structure refers to the arrangement of the constituents of a sentence. This definition is due to the Merriam-Webster dictionary. Accordingly, the phrase structure of a sentence entails the analysis of a sentence into its internal constituents. When we say, phrase structure of a sentence what do we mean we mean how the sentence can be analyzed into its internal constituents now we have two questions at this level what are the constituents of a sentence this is the first question or a phrase the second question is how are they practically identified how can we practically identify the constituents of a sentence concerning the first question which is about the constituents of a sentence we were, were going to answer the question on the basis of a sample structure of course there are different kinds of structures different kinds of sentences but we are going to see basically this simple uh, structure which is a sample an example of other structures and you will see uh, some kinds of the components of which this sentence consists so this is a sentence let's call it s it consists of a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase this is what we call the immediate division of or analysis of the sentence any sentence is divided into two main components an np which is subject and a predicate vp and which 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 which, which, which may uh, comprise the verb per se if the verb is intransitive or the verb and its objects whether one object or two objects depending on the kind of verb we're going to see this when we reach the uh, section of nonverbal uh, constituents uh, verbal con i'm sorry verbal constituents we can go further into analyzing the internal structure of the uh, first np because here we, are, we will see that we have two nps the first one is the small boy that this is the first np okay and we will see that this np 
consists of a determiner, which is the, an adjective, which is small, and a noun, which is boy. Then the VP also consists of a verb followed by a noun phrase, a second noun phrase. The verb is the verb to play, plays, conjugated into simple present, and then the noun phrase, uh, the piano. The noun phrase itself consists of two elements, the determiner and determiner the, and the noun piano. So these are basically, this is how we analyze a sentence into its constituents, starting from the largest constituents, which means subject and predicate, into the smallest constituents until we reach the uh, words, whether they are determiners or adjectives or adverbs or verbs or nouns or whatever. The second question, which is about the identification of constituents, we first define the term constituent. What's a syntactic constituent? In syntactic analysis, a constituent is a word. It can be a word or a group of words that functions as a single unit within a hierarchical structure. When we, say, when we say functions as a single unit, we have seen before in our previous lectures uh, what, what, what a, a syntactic function is. So we have, it, can, it can function as a subject, okay? A constituent can function as a subject or as an object or as a modifier or complement or uh, subject complement, object complement, it depends. These are the syntactic uh, functions that we have seen before. So a constituent, by definition, is one word or a group of words that fulfills a function, a syntactic or grammatical function. Simply put, it is a group of words that form a phrase in a sentence and has a function. Many constituents are realized either as simple words, just simply one word, or phrases accordingly. A sentence is not simply a string of, high, of linearly ordered words. It is a set of words that combine to form larger units, phrases, which in turn combine to form a sentence. So consider this sentence. John will invite his intimate friends after the event. John is going, has a, a big event, so he's, he wants to invite his inter, intimate friends. There are groups of words in sentence A, in this sentence, which seem to go together as indicated by the bracketed inserted, the bracketing inserted in B below. So we can say that John alone is a constituent. Will, which is the model, is also another constituent, and we will give evidence. Why do we consider will alone as a constituent and not as part of the following VP? Invite his intimate friends after the event. The whole of it is a constituent. So we have John and then will. And then we have invite his intimate friends after the event is a whole constituent. Within this constituent, there are sub constituents. For example, his intimate friends is another constituent, and after the event is another constituent. Okay, so these are the constituents that are intu intuitively recognized by the native speakers to exist in this sentence. But we cannot say that the bracketing that exists in sentence C, okay, consists of uh, uh, acceptable constituents. So we say, you cannot say that John Will is a constituent. It has no function. You cannot say that it is a subject or whatever. Invite his also is not a constituent. We cannot have a bracketing here, to, to, which, which combines okay, or connects invite and his. Intimate friends after also is not a constituent. The event, yes, the event is a constituent because it's an, an, an EP. So here, as you can see, there is a difference between the bracketing which is done in sentence B and the one which is inserted in sentence C. In sentence B, it is intuitively acceptable. In sentence C, it is not acceptable. And we will see some of the tests of constituency which 
uh, support the bracketing in B and refute the bracketing which exists in C. So a constituent consists of one or more words which behave as a single entity from a syntactic point of view. The question that is in order now is the following. How can we identify a syntactic constituent? So for example, why can we say that John is a constituent, Will I guess, is a constituent, invite his friends until the end is another constituent. Whereas we cannot say that John Will is a constituent. Okay, what are the practical and empirical arguments that support the first bracketing and refute the second or refuse to have the second bracketing? The answer that we have here, a string of words and sometimes just a single word forms a constituent if it is, this is a condition, if it can be subject to syntactic manipulations as a unit. What are the syntactic manipulations? For example, it allows being replaced by another word, moved from one position to another in a sentence. It can be deleted with without affecting the grammaticality of the sentence. So we can say that a word or a group of words is a syntactic constituent only if it can be replaced by another word. For example, a noun can be replaced by a pronoun. A noun phrase is replaced by a pronoun. Or, for example, when we say John Will, we cannot say that he as a pronoun replaces John Will, but he as a pronoun can replace John in the previous sentence. Or if it, it can be moved from one position to another. For example, after the event that we have in the previous sentence, we can say, after the event, comma, John will invite his intimate friends. So after the event is a constituent because it can be moved to the initial position of the sentence. Or it can be deleted without affecting the grammaticality of the sentence. We can delete after the event because it's an adverbial which is optional. So we can say John will invite his intimate friends. And we stop and the sentence is perfectly grammatical. So these are some of the syntactic manipulations that allow us to say that a group of words or a word is a constituent or not. So the, these manipulations or syntactic operations are called constituency tests. In the next lecture, I will introduce five of these tests which can help a syntactician to determine whether a given unit is indeed a constituent or not. The constituency tests that we will see okay, in the next lecture are the following. Substitution test. Clefting test, question test, deletion test, and movement test. So thank you very much and see you then.